Here we are now in class doing section 11.4. It's called Fundamentals of Probability. But before we get there, we have to prep for everything that we've learned because we're going to be utilizing all the information. So in section 8.1, we studied the fundamental counting principle. And in this counting principle, we learned that we needed two or more independent sets. They don't share anything. Of elements. If we wanted to know how many, oops, made that too close, didn't it? How many combinations? Selection set supply times n, which is totals of each set. Right. Well, then we progressed, and we went to section 8.2. In 8.2, we learned about permutations. And the first thing we learned was a factorial. Symbol is an exclamation point after the number. And it meant that if we had an example, it would be, let's try 6 factorial. And that would mean 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Well, we know this is 30. This is 24, right? 12 times 2. Well, then we would get our answer as 6. And of course, we learned the calculator. I'm not going to go into the calculator. You look at your notes. From the factorial, we learned about permutations. Those are order specific. Arrangements of elements from a subset. Of one set. We need one set in permutations. And from that, learned a formula or structure. We didn't use the formula. We use the app key. And it was a series of processes. We said R. So N is a total number of elements. R is the size of the arrangement. Right. 
So then, from there, and we did the calculator. Again, you'll have to look at your notes. Um, I can't repeat everything. I'd be teaching again. Then we went to 8.3. I'm sorry, these are all 11. I don't know why I'm calling them 8. I've been doing a lot of classes, so sorry. And we learned combinations. Combinations, it was groupings, where order is not important. All of these are under the guise of counting uh, com combinations of elements, permutations of elements, or uh, groupings from sets. What we had here was the same structure, except we said and Right. So now we're going to utilize everything we've learned and um, discuss fundamentals of probability. Well, probability can be done in uh, three ways, and so we want to review those. First are ratios, and ratios are fractions terms. It has a numerator Sells a count of or subset of the denominator. How many make one? And this is important uh, because uh, the first, uh, this particular item, we're going to have a lot of uh, fractions. And then we also know we can have a probability described as a decimal. Well, we know that a fraction is undone division. So we would get our, our ratio and do numerator divided by denominator in the calculator. And this converts it to a decimal. Well, sometimes probability is given as a percent, and a, a percent is a conversion. Decimals. Percents. Some schools, they say, move the decimal. Two places. And add, <coughs> excuse me, and add a percent. And we know that's this uh, ratio kind of looking. and add the percent symbol. Is uh, using a calculator, uh, inner decimal, uh, I'm sorry, yes. And then whatever's there, uh, then add. percent symbol. <coughs> so, so what is probability? This is the first step to predicting or uh, solving uh, uh, parts of um, we learned this 
in a sense of the probability um, early on. And, uh, so probability strength. of a desired outcome. So, capital P of an event is the cardinality of the event, how many there are, over the cardinality of a sample space. Now, I'm going to get into that further in this lesson, but this is what the structure is. So if we keep the structure, then we know how to construct the ratio or decimal or percent. All right. Well, probability only lives between the closed uh, values of 0 to 1, inclusive. There can be no negative numbers. There can be no numbers, it can only be between and one. So this I got from the textbook. It shows that we can have 0% or 0 as a value, 50% uh, or the ratio 1 half, 100% for 1. This is the total of what a probability can be. Notice that at zero, it is impossible to happen. The prediction of the desired event will not occur. And anywhere between zero and 50 is pretty much unlikely. Unlikely. When we get to 50, we know we have a 50-50 chance. And you've heard that all of your uh, young adult life. Now, anything between 50 and a certainty, which is 100% or 1, is very likely. Now you can have strength in feeling that you might get your desired uh, event. So, we're going to talk about this theoretical probability. Theoretical means we know all of the outcomes possible. Because we know the, all the outcomes possible, we can try an experiment or not. So we have a specific set of outcomes, like uh, rolling a die, uh, playing cards, or uh, 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 flipping a coin. Those are known outcomes. So the criteria for calculating theoretical probability means that we can have an experiment. It's to uh, demonstrate outcomes. by doing uh, the uh, uh, doing the exper uh, experiment and that means carrying out whatever it is flipping a coin or, uh, or uh, drawing a card So now that we have this structure of what an experiment can be, we can identify all possible outcomes. This is critical uh, that you can state it. 
In other words, if we roll a six-sided dice, five or six possible. That's it. That's all we can have. Or if we flip a coin, we know we're going to have either a head or a tail. Uh, is the outcome. It's not going to land and balance itself uh, in the middle. It just we either get a head or a tail because eventually gravity will make it. So an event is desired outcome. of the experiment. In other words, I want to flip a coin and it to be heads. I want to roll a die and get a six. I want to, um, I want to get a card, uh, a, a, I want to get a, a five uh, card dealt to me uh, that has all spades. All right. Those things are the event, and that is a unique uh, calculation of quantities, which we just discussed, uh, from the counting principle, uh, the permutation, and combinations, if it's not necessary. But So I got this from the book on page 733 of your textbook, and it's what I said, the N implies cardinal number. And we understand it as total number of elements uh, that we're using in uh, the problem. So we're going to get right to it. And um, and uh, understand that what we do here is expose you to simple probability. Now, the idea of it, it will be chapter 12, our last one, which is statistical. So let's look at this. A 12-sided die is rolled. The set of, now this is very critical, critical, equally likely outcomes is 1 through 12, what I said. Uh, a 12-sided dice is done on some of those uh, interactive reality games. Find the probability, oops, typo, uh, the, of rolling a 9. Okay, so the cardinality of our sample space is 12. That's all we can get. I'm going to put down that. Our desired event. So this is our event. Is only rolling a 9, which the cardinality is 1. What we have now is the probability of structure. N of our event over the N of our sample space is going to be 1. So with a ratio. Uh, unless it's a very unusual fraction, it's usually a ratio that answer key, ins, answers to the homework. Now understanding the meaning of less than and greater In this case, I'm getting to make sure that I prepare everything. So in this case, in most of our probability,
we use the less than or greater than. So the less than spell applies all values that are value stated. So it's zero to that value that we're considering. It stops at zero, no negative elements. So that's what you know. Greater than that are greater value stated. And these are finite tips. So there's a a start and an end and they and these are using only natural numbers not decimals not uh, uh, fractions because they imply specific members of a set okay that takes care of that. So now we're going to get to some examples using these symbols. A 12-sided die is rolled. The set of equally, uh, likely equally outcomes is 1 through 12. Find the probability of rolling a number less than 4. So let's get started there. I need a little more space because I write big. My sample space is 12 because it's listed. And my uh, e event is uh, less than 4. So I'm going to list the values less than 4 from this die. 1, 2, and 3. 4 is not included because 4 is equal to, and we don't have that symbol. So now I'm going <clears> to <throat> write my structure. Row less. So that would be the cardinality of my event, cardinality of my sample space. Now I insert the values I have. Oops, I forgot to tell you, there's only three numbers there. So my desired event, there are three possibilities out of the entire sample space of 12. Here, we have to reduce. And that's going to be 1 over 4. How did I get that 1 over 4? Well, I divided the top number by 3 and the bottom number by 3. And this is the answer. If you insert this one into the computer, it will be counted wrong. All right, so now let's do another example. In this one, again, we have a 12-sided. And in this 12-sided, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, we're finding the probability of a number greater than 4. So we're going to do our sample space. Cardinal, cardinal number, which is 12, and then our event. Now, this one we're going to construct, right? Because it said less, uh, greater, sorry, uh, I'll have to read, greater than 4. So this is the set of 5, 6, 7, 8, 
7 and 12. These numbers are greater than 4. So I'm going to count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8. So we have 8 in this event. Now I'm going to construct my problem. Probability of rolling greater than 4. And we know cardinality of my desired event over the cardinality of my sample space. I reduce by 4. Now, I know I do this for a living. You can reduce by 2 and reduce by 2. Uh, I'm going to have 2 out of 3. 2 thirds. It is likely this will happen. This one it will, but it's likely to occur. This is unlikely. It doesn't mean it, it won't. It just means there's not a big chance that it will be a number less than four. Okay. We have another example. A 12 sided die is rolled. The set of equally likely outcomes is 1 through 12. Find the probability of rolling a 17. Okay, so we want our sample space. That is 12. And then we want our event. And we're looking at 17. Well, is there a 17? Well, no, that's a zero. So now we're going to say probability of rolling 17. Well, it's the cardinality of our desired event over the cardinality of our sample space. This is zero because 17 is out of the set that we're using over 12. Well, any number divided um, by, uh, any zero divided by a number is zero. So it is definitely uh, unlikely here. We're gonna say this one is impossible. Well, let's look at this one, because this one's unique as well. We're still having that dog on 17. So let's see how we derive. Side of die is right. The set of equally likely outcomes is 1 through 12. Find the probability of ruling a number less than 17 from that die. Now, this is unique. So we have our sample space. And then we want our event dice and getting less than 17. Well, that's also 12. So now we're going to write this probability. Even though 17 is not in the die, they want all values less than 17, which means from 0 to 12. I know that is really funny, right? But we have to understand how to how to evaluate what they tell us. So we want the cardinality of our event over the cardinality of our sample space. Well, that's 12 over 12. Well, any number divided by itself is 1. This is a certainty. Fascinating, right? OK. I'm going to stop there because I've, sp I've spoken, because of the review, quite a bit. Um, so we'll start again in just a minute. Keep listening, keep making notes, and watch the videos.